Well, we're in Seward, Alaska, guys, and we just caught our limit of silver salmon. We were snagging for these. We got 12 huge fish right here. I'm gonna see if they fit in this ice chest and we're gonna get them home. Oh, two at the same time. That's not that big. That's a pink. I would put it back. Unless you want it as your limit. I got a snag. Hold on, dude. There you go. I like to gut him or to bleed him. Watch your eyes, man. That's what I like to see right there. There you go. And we'll see. Doesn't seem that big. No, it's a small one. But I'm gonna keep it because we don't have many lures. Yeah. Or whatever, snacks. Uh, yeah, I'll get it. Oh, what a beautiful color. Yeah, you think? <laughs> um, look at that. Babe, that last one I caught was reminding me of like when you catch a huge shock guy. No, I didn't even have any control. control. It just yeah. was like, whoo. all those silver salmon. It's actually our first time catching silver salmon. We've never eaten it, so we're definitely gonna do a taste test on these. I think we got like a three and a half, a four hour drive home maybe. So we're gonna get these on ice and we're gonna head home. And once we get home, we're gonna talk a little bit more about how we are fishing for these things. And we're also gonna decide what we're gonna do with them. Probably should have brought a bigger ice chest, but we didn't know we were going to limit. So catch our limits, that's really exciting. They barely fit in here. We took some small ones, but we also have some really nice big ones. So very excited to get these home and get them processed.
All right, guys, we made it back to the cabin with our fish, and I had already put the smoker away for the winter and pulled it back out, and we are going to smoke some of this fish today. We're going to get the fish out of the ice chest on the table, and we're going to start filleting them. Before we get started on processing our fish, Eric and I were going to talk a little bit about what kind of fishing we were doing. We decided to take a trip to Seward for silvers. Yeah, and the type of fishing we're doing is called snagging, and it is basically throwing this huge treble hook that has a weight molded on it into the water, jerking it as fast as you can in hopes that this hook will snag a salmon. And you can snag the fish wherever you want. It does not have to be in the mouth. So that type of fishing is obviously not allowed everywhere and it's definitely not allowed everywhere in Alaska. There's only certain spots that you are allowed to do that and you do have to be a resident. As far as the rod and the reel we're using, we both have, I think these are like seven foot or seven and a half foot, really heavy rods. And then we use, we just have cheap reels and we use 20 pound test line. I think we could have went a little bigger on the line. We did snap off a few of the fish. These fish are really big and aggressive out there. We hadn't fished for these before and it was a blast. They did range from you know smaller to bigger fish depending upon the age, yep. but they were definitely some of the, the biggest fish that we fished for. Yeah, when you hook into these things, if you have a big one, it just, they take off on you. It feels like a rock with a motor in it. So these things are super fun to catch. There was a lot of people out there, so you have to keep that in mind if you're doing this type of fishing. Some places you go in Alaska, it's called combat fishing. When the fish are there, the people are definitely there too. You've probably heard us talk about different salmon that we have in Alaska, and there's five different kinds. There's Chinook or the King Salmon. That's something that Eric and I have not fished for. And then you have the Sockeyes or the Reds, Pink Salmon, Chum Salmon, and then lastly, the Silvers. And the Silvers come in late. So we were really excited that we had time this year, you know, just getting the moose done early. To, to go there and do it. And Seward is absolutely beautiful, of course. Uh, yeah, Seward is an awesome town. It's probably one of the most beautiful places we've been in Alaska. And you may think that just throwing a huge hook out there in the water and just catching these fish wherever you can is like really easy, but I assure you it's not. We actually got there the night before. We fished for, I don't know, three, three, three and a half hours. And I hooked one that got off, but that was it. We didn't catch anything else. And we were constantly just throwing that weight out there as far as we could and jerking it in, jerking it in, both of us fishing pretty hard for those three hours. The next morning we woke up, we were the only ones out there. We got there super early in the morning and first cast, I got one. I think my second cast, I got one. The fish were just right there. So it's a really quick morning and we're definitely glad that we fished our second day. We were both allowed to catch six fish and that's what we did. So we got a total of 12 fish. We only have about 70 jars of salmon, which is not as many as we had the year before. But since we have the moose, I'm not overly concerned about that, but this is, this is awesome for us. So we're gonna be jarring most of it because it will preserve, for us that just works for preserving it. It'll last the longest that way. And Eric's gonna be smoking that. We have some plans to cook up some tonight since we've never tried it fresh. And we also have plans to make some gravlax and sushi since those are recipes we both wanted to try. So let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our fish on the table and we got two knives out here. We're gonna start getting them filleted and they're going on the smoker for a couple hours. Where's our crooked Ready? Female. A girl? Finishing up on our last fish here, beautiful red meat. This looks a lot like the sockeye or the red salmon. And we got a nice big bowl of the stuff that Ariel's kind of been scraping off the carcasses. We love that stuff. We chop it up real fine and we make burgers out of it. And then we got some set aside that we're gonna make the gravel axe out of. And then the rest is gonna go on the smoker. He's gonna fill the whole thing up, huh? Okay. go full load huh boom before i fire up the smoker we are actually going to season these fish this time we usually just do these things as is we smoke them and can them but i have a little bit of this uh seasoning that we used to make our moose sausage i have a little bit left over so i'm going to put this on the fish and we'll see how it turns out so 
So we're gonna get this started. We're gonna get some coals going in there, just some regular firewood, and then we are gonna be using seasoned alder to smoke this. So I figured I'd take the opportunity to clean our garlic. We harvested a few weeks ago and we need some of this for our jars of salmon. I'm really excited to have this this year. We're also gonna be adding some jalapenos and fresh herbs when we get those jarred and we are almost there. The meat's almost done smoking. This is looking good. Time to put the salmon in some jars. This is a very big play though. Wow. Do you see how red this one is? Before we get started on dinner, we are gonna make Gravlax and we have never made this, so we're gonna see how it turns out. We got a nice filet of that silver salmon here. I'm gonna start by cutting it in half. We're basically gonna cover these filets in a little bit of vodka, sugar, salt, pepper, dill and parsley. We're gonna let it sit for about four days and then we're gonna make sushi out of it. We're gonna keep this in our cooler for two to four days and we're gonna be turning it maybe like every day to make sure that the brine gets into the fish and we're gonna be trying this. Like I said, we're gonna be making sushi out of it, but we're gonna get started on dinner. Let's make some dinner. We are doing a bed of quinoa with a salmon filet on top with some fried skin and some steamed vegetables. Let's get started on the salmon. We wanna keep things really simple because this is the first time we've had silver salmon, so we wanna do like kind of a taste test on it, but we also want it to taste really good. So we're gonna do a honey garlic kind of rub on this, so it's gonna be delicious. All right, we got the honey and the garlic on there. We're gonna do a little bit of cilantro on top. This is a baby. No, no, no. Mm. 
Well, it was a lot of hard work for this meat. We're gonna eat. I ate the first piece. <laughs> Me first. Get out of here, chicken. It's really good. It, it tastes, I mean, it's good. It does not taste like sockeye. No. But at all, really. Mm. But it's different. It doesn't taste like the pink or chum. And I can't compare it to Chinook, but it's it's good. I mean, it's good. It's really like flaky for and th firm. It tastes like just pure meat. No mild. like mild. Yeah, mild. Just pure firm meat. No like Seven. oily. <laughs> yeah, no fishy flavor. I mean, this is this is delicious. You can taste the lemon. Mm -hmm. Or sorry, you can taste the garlic. You can taste the honey. It's really really good. Both of us really enjoy that this fish was a girthier fish. Really thick mm -hmm. and just had a lot more for the fillets for cooking and for preserving, you know, it just helps us. And the fish skin, what do you think? I don't know if that was how you cooked <laughs> it, but I thought it was the best I'd ever had. Mm hmm. Fish skin is great. Love it. This is delicious. This is great. It reminds me of if I was at a restaurant and ordered salmon or just super mild. Mm hmm. Like mild salmon. Really good. Just good salmon. Just. Well, we both can agree that this is awesome. We are going to finish up our meal. It's 8.15 and the sun is going down. So we're going to head inside, make a fire, and then we will catch back up with you guys in a few days when our Gravelox is ready, or Gravelox is ready, and we will make sushi. It is finally time to try our Gravelax, and before we make sushi out of it, I'm gonna try it just as is and see how it tastes. It actually put off quite a bit of liquid in those four days, so we just drained it out of the pan that it was in, and we got it to sit on the counter, and we're gonna try it. So it pretty much smells like vodka and dill. Kinda hard to say what that tastes like. It's a little bit of sweetness, not really salty at all. You can definitely taste the dill. Um, uh, pretty good. I don't know if I just eat that by itself. I could probably eat a few bites, but not the whole thing. I'm going to get some slices sliced up. I'm going to put it on this. We're going to make some sushi and Errol's going to come in here. We're going to try it. All right. That actually looks really good. This looks like something you'd straight up get from a sushi restaurant. So we're gonna try this. All I did was I made sushi rice, which was like rice with salt, vinegar, and sugar. I put a little piece of seaweed on each one, and then we got the fish with green onion on top. And to dip those, we have soy sauce, and I have garlic in here, and also a little bit of green onion. So let's give this a go. Eric's out in the conics. He's trying to see if we have any chopsticks, but I just couldn't wait. It's like a sushi restaurant. Yeah. Look, gosh, that's so bad. All right, we have one pair of chopsticks. Oh yeah, that sushi rice is holding together. Awesome. Let me try this. Mmm. You know what it tastes like? We just want to go sushi. Yeah. I did try a piece of the salmon just by itself, and I pretty much agree with Eric. I didn't really want to just eat it as is. Um, we, we have tried it raw before, and this is with a light cure, but it just tasted really mild and a little bit dillish, but on the, the meal you made is wonderful. Oh my gosh. That's like one of the things, if we want to treat ourselves and we want to go to, out to eat, we'll go get sushi. We really like going to get sushi. I'm just gonna make this from now on. That's so good. It's missing the wasabi, but that's, that is delicious. Well, I did one cup of rice and that was enough to do almost that one filet. And we have another filet left that's a little bit bigger. So I think I'm gonna have to make more rice and finish that off. That is, this is good. This is. This is hands down one of my favorite things we've made. This was our first time making it, so I'm really not sure how long the frit, the, the fish would store in this manner. Probably not much longer would be my guess, but we'll yeah. eat it tonight. Heck yeah. And I think next time I made that, I might not put the vodka in there just because it kind of seemed like... It would make it seat more? It, it's, it's a, it's, there's a lot of moisture in the fish right now. And I, I was expecting something that was a little bit drier, maybe had like kind of a crust on the skin. So we might have to experiment in the future and just do like a dry rub on it maybe or something. But again, this stuff is awesome. 
Eric and I are pretty much done salmon fishing for the year and uh, we may do a few a little more fishing trips, but just not for salmon. And that's pretty much gonna do it for this episode. I think I'm gonna make some more rice and let it cool and make another thing of sushi. We're gonna finish this off and we'll see you next time. Thank you guys.